Hello, denizens, to this special edition of Peter Paul Chato Saves Social Media. In this episode, I want to teach you all how to debate on various social media platforms because I do like the odd debate. It's fun. I'm good at it. And I really hate seeing the hash many of you are making of your debates. And, and for many of you, it's fraught with emotion and anxiety coupled with unsatisfactory results. I'm going to help you. I want to show you how to quickly qualify the discussion to see if, if it will just be a bloody waste of your time. Now, some would say all discussions on social media is a bloody waste of your time. And for the most part, I would agree. But sometimes something pops up that you are itching to dive into. And the fact remains, social media is a thing. It's here, people use it, and it's seductive. Of, of personal note, I prefer Twitter over Facebook. Yes, Twitter is a cesspool and a great way to start and end your day in a rage. But I left Facebook because it was the same old people calling me an asshole, whereas I could always count on a new batch of people calling me an asshole on Twitter. Kind of refreshing. So, debating on social media. First off, I want to make a distinction between a discussion and a debate. A discussion is an exchange of ideas where one or both of you hope something might stick. A debate means I'm going to crush you. It's sport. No crying aloud. That's actually one of a couple of questions I ask before deciding if it's worthwhile moving forward. For heaven's sake, please don't dive into responding to the claims of your rival. It, it rarely ends well. I'm going to try to keep you at a 30,000 foot above the fray level. Don't, don't get dragged into the weeds of historical events and dueling news clippings, especially if you don't have the facts to back up your claims. Perhaps it's worse if, if you do. Generally, refighting the past has no value. Debating, uh, debate in the present it is what it is when it is. This one trick will infuriate your opponent without calling them names. So, after I ask them if they want a debate or a discussion, I like to ask if they are allowed to have their mind changed. Would their peer group allow them to have a different opinion and still remain a member of that peer group in good standing? The majority of uh, the majority of times they say no, and that's the end of that. The only reason you would probably continue is because you like masturbating to your own jibber jabber. Not me. I'm gone. Next, I'm going to lay out the reasons two people might have a difference of opinion. Look, none of this is a secret. You you, you know all of this, but it's important to be conscious of it because it's just so easy to get sucked into a Twitter spat when your emotions are enraged. God damn it! Quarter horses are not dumb! I, I, I don't think they are. Reasons you take aside. Facts. Both of you could believe that your facts are correct and honestly sourced. That is certainly the basis for, uh, you know, a potential fruitful back and forth. Your religion. Religion can promote a specific worldview, and, and I'm not talking about um, religion versus atheism. I'm referring to having a position based on your religion, and there are many religions to base your opinions on. Your politics. Always a favorite, and that can also be mixed with religion. Your influences. As you grow, uh, different events, people will influence you. Your parents are big influencers for good and for bad. Your social group or peer group or cult. This 
might just be your biggest influence, as these are the people you talk with all the time. You go out together. You have fun together. You have sex together. You don't want to be ostracized. Your country of origin, obviously. Go, Belgium, go! Your sex, or the sex you want to be identified with. And finally, you take a side because you have an agenda. I don't debate people with an agenda. I think I've covered most of the items here. You can think of the above as just being on a team. Team left, team anti-vaxxer, team Catholic, team Arab, team Jew, team straight versus team rainbow, team Republican, team Democrat. These are all legit reasons for people to want to get into a discussion whether they have their facts straight or not. I don't hold it against them for the most part. It's, it's, it's totally legit and no reason to discard their opinions because you are offended by the team they are on. That's just not helpful. I do have a problem when someone has no dog in a fight commenting on behalf of others. Why does a, a man feel like they have to speak on behalf of all women, for instance? Why do the Irish insist on speaking on behalf of Middle Eastern conflicts? I know why, but I'll, I'll get into trouble if I say. Or why do straight women feel they need to speak on behalf of gays, trans, blacks, Puerto Ricans, animal husbandry, parking in disabled places? Say, what's up with you straight women? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I'm not. I like acknowledging that I know they are on Team X and understand that. I like to frame their argument and ask them if I got it right. Then I ask them if they can frame my argument. That often has interesting results because most people with an agenda are only interested in firing off their salvos of rehearsed arguments. And, and everybody has an agenda. I'm just talking earlier about people with agenda agendas. Anyways, um, that is my goal. I'm trying to disrupt their scripted responses. I like to ask what they want the outcome to be. Keeping the discussion about what can be done now. What the Romans did 2,000 years ago has no bearing. Hell, what happened 20 years ago has little to no bearing. It is what it is when it is. As you can tell, I prefer a Socratic method of debating, asking questions. Just ask one question at a time and don't move on until they have answered. Most of my discussions end after the third time I've asked, but with no response. Next, you need to understand methods of obfuscation. I'll just mention a couple here. They include othering, for example, but what about when blah, 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 blah? That's othering. I don't allow othering. Remind your antagonist to stay on topic. And for heaven's sake, don't follow them down the othering rabbit hole. Another trick is the use of a, a barrage of endless links to external sources they will try to bludgeon you with. This can end up becoming an external links war. They're are a few problems with this. It can take a lot of time to watch or read their links. Usually they are from extremely biased sources and frankly your tit-for-tat sources are probably biased also. Can I add memes are not evidence. Another important way to win a debate is to be civil. Believe it or not, Taking the higher ground, while often not as much fun, is a better way to win the day. Remember, your goal is to get them off their game. I always like to remember a Mad Magazine parody where they wondered who really was the bad guy in the James Bond movies. The bad guy would speak calmly to the captured Bond. 
So, good of you to come, Mr. Bond. Would you like breakfast? I've had my henchwoman cook your eggs exactly as you like them. Then Bond would answer with, Stuff your eggs, Blofeld, where the sun don't shine. I'm going to destroy your secret lair and watch it collapse all around your head. Then the bad guy would respond, I'm sorry you feel that way, Mr. Bond. Would you like to take lemon in your tea? You need to be like that bad guy. Keep it together. Another trick I like to use is to find something you can agree on and tell them you agree on it. That usually throws them for a loop. The thing is, most people on the other end are nicer than you imagine them to be. If you had met in person and had the same discussion over a beer, you might even have ended up as friends. But Social media is the great barrier reef to fruitful discussions, and that's the way the tech giants want it. They want the heated exchanges. That is the fuel that feeds the platform and makes advertisers happy. If people were rational and kind to each other, social media would die. Life is a series of negotiations. Wouldn't it be nice if school would teach kids how to debate ideas respectfully? Some used to. Unfortunately, schools have removed debate entirely because it might hurt people's feelings. But it's doing the exact opposite, creating an army of young people without the tools to manage their hurt feelings. Now, everyone is either being offensive or being offended. I hope this was of help. If you disagree with what I have presented, <laughs> be seeing you.